the feature so many of our listeners wait for each day. Producers Picks. Producers Picks is when my producer, Jerry Diglio, searches for the most interesting, compelling stories of the day, and he lets us know what's on his mind. Go ahead, Jared. All right. And taking a lesson from the captain and from Grace Curley, lead with your best sound. So I want to say to everybody, welcome to the wild, wild west. This is Texas State Rep Ann Johnson talking about the Texas Conceal Carry Law. You bring up a great point. That 21-year-old pimp, that 21-year-old pimp, that 21-year-old trafficker who is not yet a convicted felon, roll on in to any place you want and buy a gun under this provision and walk around in whatever way you want. No training, no understanding, Wild West pimp style. That's what this bill does. And then that pimp can roll into whatever small businesses in your community with their stable of girls and they can flaunt it. And if you don't have the courage to stand up and say, Mr. Pimp, with your stable of girls, I really don't want you in here in my business in this manner. If you don't want to confront them, you got to call the police and say, guess what's going on in here? <laughs> All right. This hypothetical took a strange turn. I, I got to say, I, my, my favorite new thing is Wild West pimp style. Yeah, I never... Wild West pimp style. And, and I love the fact that she got uh, his stable of girls and all these pimp terms. I, I, that is, again, uh, yesterday Chuck Schumer talking 420 on the, the floor of the Senate was great, but this, this is phenomenal. It says, uh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Pimp, with your stable of girls. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I've ever heard anything quite like that. Wild West pimp style. Wild West pimp style. She also said it like seven times. In she, the... she enj- she's one of those people that seems like she enjoyed saying pimp. Yeah. You know? Hey. Like it, it's one of those dirty words you can't say, but but she got to say it. Um, wild West pimp style, which is, I think, how I'm going to pretty much conduct my life from now on. Oh, As you should. Hey, Jared, how you doing today? Wild West pimp style. <laughs> Speaking of another good day for pimps, Manhattan will no longer prosecute prostitution. Hmm. Or unlicensed massages. All good. No prosecution. Not going to have to send the police out for these complaints. And they're going to go back retroactively to move to dismiss 5,080 loitering for the purpose of prostitution cases. See, I I, I don't want to weigh in, which I know is not what I should say, but... I don't want to weigh in either way because it's it's one of those days where I don't need people who are pro um, legalizing prostitution to get on my case or people who are anti. I'm sure there's valid complaints for both, but just because it's we're wrapping up the show here, I'm just going to let this one sit and I'll think about it. I'll think about it and I'll figure out where I stand, but I'm not going to wing it today. That is District Attorney Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance Jr., the Trump hunter who was done in December. Who is pushing that uh, decision on? Cy Vance has quite the illustrious career. He's done quite a. He's there's some cases he has no interest in, and then there's other cases that he really, really cares about. He cared a lot about Donald Trump. So uh, of course everybody knows that the CIA spies on you, the FBI monitors you, Homeland Security, thanks to the Patriot Act, can tap your phone lines, do whatever. If you're a presidential administration that doesn't like the next guy, you can just buy on people in general and now every single government agency it seems is spying on americans yahoo news obtained a document about the united states postal service internet covert operations program which it's called icop and the post office monitored significant activity regarding planned protests occurring internationally and domestically on March 20th, 21. All right, I hate to be this person, but do you think maybe they could just focus on the post office? Like, do you, you, uh, Jared, have you tried to send a letter recently? I have to say... It's a if, 50-50 shot it gets there. If I pay $20 to have it next day delivery, 
it better be there the next day. Most of the time, it's like not the next day. It's the day after that. It's because they're monitoring people and they're trying exactly. to, they're trying, you know what? They're spreading themselves too thin. Okay. If you're Newman and you're at the post office, focus on the post office. Leave the spying for another day. Oh, that drumpf. You know what, though? My grandfather was a uh, postal worker. Just a fun fact. Bubbles like, Just boil. like John Kasich. Yes, yes. No, I think his dad was a milkman. Oh, I thought it was, I don't know. His... I No, it wasn't a mailman. I believe it was a milkman, but I will double check that. God save the Queen, Grace. Today, Queen Elizabeth II turns 95 years old, still going strong. I love Queen Elizabeth. Um, I'm wishing her the happiest birthday. I know it's not the happiest birthday because she's still mourning Prince Philip, but I hope she had a nice birthday. I saw Prince Harry left. He's back in California, so yes. he's not celebrating his grandmom's birthday, but um, I hope she has a nice birthday nonetheless. Yes, so happy birthday to the queen, 95 years young. Have today. some tea and crumpets. She looks great, though. Did you watch any of Prince Philip's funeral? I did not. I watched a little bit over the weekend, and I just have to say, they all had the masks on in the church, and it's just like, and the queen had one on in the car. She was basically alone the whole time. It just seems silly to me. I just wish I, mean, I could have seen she's 95. I'll, I'll give her. But she's probably fully vaccinated. Don't you think she's got access to a, a vaccine at I, this she, point? She may be, but, you know, hey, I mean, you, you know, maybe the stiff upper lip wasn't so stiff anymore, and she just kind of had to... Oh, you, oh it, you think you know? she wanted to she, cover she, her face? She, yeah, I mean, she's the queen. She can't be overly emotional. That's true. She's such a boss. I want to be like the queen someday. So, Ohio, not news related to quote-unquote knife fights. Ohio Republicans are aiming to rename a state park for Donald John Trump. Really? Yes, the bill primarily sponsored by freshman rep Mike Loichick to rename Mosquito State Park. To Donald J. Trump State Park to on to honor the former president. Mosquito State Park? Yes, Mosquito State Park. So it's screaming for a new name. Seriously. And why not go with Donald J. Trump Park? I have a feeling that's not going to go over well with some people in the neighborhood, but Oh <laughs> no, I'm I'm sure it is uh, absolutely not going to go over well. But other news for the uh Trump administration, Simon and Schuster rejected their employees' call to drop Mike Pence's book deal. I saw this, and I have to say, kudos to Simon & Schuster. We have to stop trying to ban or delete or cancel people. If you don't want someone's opinion, don't buy their book. I didn't buy Andrew Cuomo's book, but I didn't try to get the book from... I didn't get... I didn't try to stop the publishing company from publishing the book. Do you see how that works? You can just not buy something. That's fine. No one's gonna no one's gonna hold up Mike Pence's book and force read it to you. Yes, uh, Pence, nobody wants to. It'd probably be a little boring. On April seventh, the publisher announced it signed a deal with Mike Pence for two books. The first, which is an autobiography, is scheduled to be published in two thousand and twenty-three. Uh, nothing yet on the second book, but another victory for not crazy people. Indiana's reading the Mike Pence book. Very nice. Thank you. Speaking of crazy, U.S. voting rights activist Stacey Abrams nominated for Nobel Peace Prize. Why not? You know, once Obama got it for doing nothing, it was kind of, it lost its pizzazz. Mm-hmm. It lost its je ne sais quoi. <laughs> yes, uh, Lars Haltbrecken a Socialist Party member for Norway's parliament, noted that Abrams' work follows Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s footsteps in the fight for equality before the law and for civil rights. Abrams' efforts to complete King's work are crucial if the United States of America shall succeed in an effort to create fraternity between all its peoples and a peaceful and just society, Haltbrecken said. Hmm. I don't think she's going to win. Much like the governor election in Georgia. Well, she did not win that. That still hasn't been called officially. Yeah, she, and I, I I saw it, but I didn't grab the sound. I don't know if you saw Ted Cruz talking to her when she was on their voter eligibility law or whatever, and he said, yeah, yes or no, like, do you still refuse to concede the 2018 election? 
But I love those questions because Democrats, we we really are living in this wacky time where they just don't answer anything. They're like, I don't not refuse to concede the election that you have rigged after this issue has come forth to. Nothing makes any sense. They don't say anything. They just dance around it. Infrastructure is everything. And on this day in 2016, five years ago, Prince shed his mortal coil. I love Prince. I'm a big Prince, Prince girl. Phenomenally talented. What's your favorite Prince song? Party Man, actually, from the from the Batman soundtrack. I really like. But I also, um, I, I have to admit this, I don't like Purple Rain. I don't like it as a song. I didn't like them. I, I don't, I just, it's not my thing. I know this is basic, but I like Kiss. Kiss is good. I like when he says, you don't have to watch Dynasty to have an attitude. See, I pushed it too far. I sang once and it was okay, but now the twice, is, <laughs> that's what's going to kill people. Um, also on this day in 2011, great moment for the Bruins. After scoring a goal in game four of the first round playoff series against the Canadians, Andrew Ferentz flipped the bird to the Montreal crowd twice, oh forever God. endearing him to Boston. And he actually... Uh, he, he later said the gesture was unintentional after being fined uh, 25000 but he was telling the story just the other day that he came home uh, to the North End where he was living, and he found taped to the entrance of his building notes and envelopes full of monies, uh, full of money from his neighbors thanking him because he flipped the bird to the Montreal crowd. Yeah, you know what's so funny is that my uh, fiancé, Will, he loves 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 the Bruins and whenever they play Montreal he really does have this intense intense dislike for their team and for their for their for their fans and I always say that and I'm like why they seem nice they seem enthusiastic there's just something there so he's listening right now I bet he loves that story so I'll I'll put this in kind of context for you because I feel the same way the Bruins are Trump the Canadians are the media and the Democrats. Okay. The same type of flopping, cheap shots, running oh. to the refs, the whole, yeah, that's that's the dynamic. And they, they're they they're also the team that they have the white the white towels, right? And they, they kind of like put them in a circle like this. They Woo! they might be. I haven't I honestly haven't I might be wrong on crowd, that. But, but but I have I have witnessed a lot of anger towards them in my living room, depending on who's winning. As as well you should. Um, all right, guys. Now, you know that Friday is fast approaching, and that means one thing. I have a free lunch to look forward to. I've had my fair share of free lunches during my time at the Howie Car Radio Network, but I can say with confidence that nothing beats Aviva Trattoria. Since the start of my show in January, Aviva Trattoria has catered a free lunch every other Friday here at the studio. That's right. Every other week, two lucky listeners have an incredible meal by Aviva and watch the show with me in studio. I quickly become less interesting than the food itself. People love this food, whether it's the chicken wings, the farmhouse pizza, the calamari, the tiramisu. People just love this spread and they're so excited whenever Aviva comes into studio. So I selected my winners. They'll be coming in this Friday and I know Marcy's going to bring in some delicious stuff. Jared, have you made any requests yet? Because you got to get those in soon. I, I haven't yet. I'm going to talk to uh, talk today and put my order in. From seafood to their homemade pasta, Aviva has you covered. They also have four convenient locations in Marlboro, Maynard, Rentham, and Westford. Takeout is available, too. To enter to win the Aviva VIP lunch, go to gracecurlyshow.com. That's gracecurlyshow.com. All you have to do, you go to gracecurlyshow.com. It will drop down. You enter your email, and you might be sitting in studio in the Aviva Trattoria studio watching the show. We'll be back on the other side with Howie Carr. Don't go anywhere. This is the Grace Curley Show. Wild West, pimp style. The Grace Curley Show will be right back.